The Healthy Pupils Capital Fund was brought about as a result of the soft drinks industry levy in 2016. This funding was distributed with the intention to improve children and young people's physical and mental health by making it easier to access facilities for physical activity, healthy eating, mental health and well-being, and medical conditions. The allocation of this funding has been driven by the characteristics of schools and their pupils. As a result of this, Cornwall Council and Active Cornwall took a targeted approach to have a more significant impact in three priority locations across Cornwall, Boardman, West Penworth, and St Austo. So I'm here at Nan Stallon School today to talk to head teacher Ben Stevenson about how he's going to be spending the money from his grant. Situated just outside Boardman, the school has an area outside the early years classroom that they want to develop into a space that will promote physical activity and learning through play outside. The head teacher, Ben Stevenson, is passionate about the benefits of physical activity for children and believes that the skills they learn through moving and playing will be taken back into their classroom-based learning. We were judged as requires improvement in 2017 and the early years area was a significant part of that. Other aspects of the report cite a lack of challenge for the children, particularly the most able. This area behind us um, is going to become our new early years outdoor area. It moves us right next door to the preschool, so that's really going to a transition. And we're going to be creating an area that is multifaceted, that actually means that children will develop communication and language, physical development, both gross and fine. We want them to be confident, we want them to be problem solvers, we want them to think out of the box. And this type of environment will just promote all of those skills. We will be back to Nan Stalin later to see the finished build. St Teth is located in the far north of Cornwall, in a very rural area where the school itself sits on the road going into the small village. St Teth School have used the fund on some play equipment and an all-weather rubber track to encourage children to cycle and scoot during the school day. With the help of their local community, they have raised some money to invest in balance bikes that can also be made into scooters. Paul Howard, the head teacher, believes in the long term this project will engage parents and families in the active travel movement so they will choose to travel to and from school without using a car. Paul hopes this will extend the active travel ethos to the wider community of St Teth and in time this will have a much wider impact not only on the health and well-being of the people of St Teth but it will also have an impact on the environment and air quality of the surrounding area too. So how do you think that this has affected um the children's wider school improvement. When they're going back to class, they're excited, they're focused on their learning, they're excited about what they're doing in class, talking about what they've done outside, working collaboratively with one another. It's made a real impact. It's very noticeable in such a short time and we're pretty sure that's going to continue well into the future. Paul, tell me about how this project has affected the children's attainment. It's early days, but we see an opportunity for that development of the gross and fine motor skills, working collaboratively with one another, you know, learning to share as well, because we've only got 10 bikes and we've got a lot of children in the school. Because we've seen such an impact in our young children, we're also extending that in, into our year two and year three children, and they're very keen to get outside and use this facility as well. We're hoping to extend it to the wider school community and not just our early years group. There isn't anything like this in, in the surrounding village, um, a soft track that the children can use. And what we're hoping is that through their excitement of, of learning in a safe environment, the children will extend this into cycling towards school, coming to school on bikes. We will have bike ability for all of the reception children in the next few weeks. That's extended later on in the school life when they go into year five. Through getting excited about the experience of learning how to cycle, how to balance on bikes, going through bike ability, we'll see more and more children come to school, A, on scooters, B, on their balance bikes, and, and C, just cycling on their own. St Teth is a great example of how to provide an active environment for children to thrive. By embedding active travel on the school agenda, Paul is enabling a new generation to learn vital life skills that they will use into adulthood in order to make healthier, more sustainable, and more active choices. We've come back to Nan Stalin to see the finished build and what effects it's had on the staff and children at the school. The development of this area connects the indoor and outdoor learning environments to make learning outside a normal part of the school life here at Nan Stalin. Ben sees how being active can stimulate wider learning outcomes for children. 
and this project has been carefully constructed to optimise the range of activities children have access to in order to encourage a wide range of skills. So a lot has changed since we last came to the school, Ben. Can you tell us a little bit about how this space has developed? Sigfund has radically transformed what was a fairly unusable space and it's a space that is now totally connected to the indoor learning environment so that there is seamless learning throughout the day. So what differences have you seen in the children settling into their first year at school from last year to this year? It's just an astonishing difference from, from this time last year. The purpose, the relevance, the challenge and how safe these children already feel um, in this space. All of these activities not only develop the child physically, but their classroom learning is enhanced by having such a breadth of opportunity. The school is nestled in the coastal village of Marazion in West Penwith. At the school, there is a very high pupil premium, which indicates deprivation amongst students. Research shows that being more physically active can have positive effects on learning outcomes, especially amongst those from areas of deprivation, the area used for this project was previously a redundant space, which was often subject to misuse and vandalism. Staff hope this project can place the school at the heart of the community and engage families to use the space to be active, connect with nature and build social cohesion between the school and the local community. The head teacher, Jenny Rainbow, is showing me how they have invested the Healthy Pupils Capital Fund. So this was uh, a, a bit of a wasteland really, so we've got a lovely playing field here and we really were focusing on learning outside of the classroom. We have the beach next door, we're very lucky, and so we built up a programme of outdoor learning linked to our beach school and even though it's across the road, it's sometimes quite tricky to get there. So we wanted a woodland space on our site that we could use so that learning outside the classroom became something that was really integral to our curriculum. Jenny, can you tell me a little bit about how this has helped get children active throughout the school day. Having somewhere that is metres away means that children can be outside of the classroom and active in their learning so much more of the time. Why do you think it's important for children to have active learning experiences? I think in current times we have many children that spend a lot of time indoors, a lot of time on screens um, and there is a place for that in, in education but actually um, you know from those very first steps in school making them realise that actually connecting with nature and being outside and learning outside is really important for them to make academic progress but for them to also realise that they've got a place and a voice in the world which includes how they react and interact with the environment and the planet they live on. And how do you think that this project can help um, children understand more about the climate emergency we're in? Something small that started in, in just not using a plastic water bottle but having our own bottles has now turned into the children being quite passionate and committed to doing everything they can and realising that small changes on a wide range of things have a massive impact. What effect do you think this area has had for pupils' well-being? Our young children have woodland school every week, all beach school, and now we haven't got to get them all on minibuses, but we've also using it for nurture groups. So a nurture group is uh, a group of children, currently in class bubbles, but usually across the school, that need some support with emotional and social well-being. And this is a perfect area for them to work together it gives them a chance to experience collaboration and sharing and showing empathy outdoors, which it's so much easier to do when you're doing a task like that, when you're all digging a hole and making something. But actually then that gives them the skills to, uh, to use that in other situations. What do you notice about children's behaviour after they've used this space? The children come and work out here and they've had you know, a wonderful space, some really meaningful learning, and then they go back into the classroom and that learning also is more productive. So it is just making sure, you know, a quality, uh, beautiful um, outdoor space and place, I think just really helps all sorts of learning. Jenny is passionate about sustainability and this is the golden thread throughout this project. The design was created collaboratively with the children at Marazion School and includes an outdoor classroom with a wild roof which will house grass and other plants where outdoor lessons can take place as well as eating outside. 
A polytunnel was incorporated into the grounds to grow produce and wild flowers, as well as encouraging an array of insects, butterflies and bees to visit, so that children can understand more about where food comes from and the conservation of wildlife in their local area. How do you think this space contributes to the climate emergency agenda you have at this school? This is really um, a very good way of saving the planet. If we can all start to grow much more of our own food, even if we've only got a backyard, you know, you can put them in pots, you can get some more greenhouses, and just that message that those food miles, imagine if it was just metres, not yeah. even miles, um, you know, so, so again, coming back to the, the message that, you know, small things in a small town make a huge difference to the world. By having these areas to explore the world around them through play, an appreciation for the environment can be fostered and lifelong healthy habits can be nurtured. It's been amazing to see the variety of projects that schools have completed and how imaginative each project is with their own bespoke designs to target different areas of learning outcomes for their pupils. This funding will have sustainable long-term impact and will integrate physical activity as a tool for behaviour change amongst children and young people in Cornwall. There's plenty of work that can be done to build on the successes schools have had so far in getting the message out there that being active can have huge benefits for everyone. If you want to find out more about how to increase opportunities for physical activity in your school and the benefits this can have to your pupils, you can get in touch with us at Active Cornwall and start putting physical activity on your school agenda today.